Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary to do a video. So, this is the continuation of yesterday's video. Well, the video I did just before this, which was my metallic bunny rabbits for Easter. So now, I purposely did it on top of a canvas, so then I can do a pearl pour. Because, who wants to waste all this beautiful paint? So what I do is I pour it onto this canvas. Actually, I'm just going to lift this before I lift it up. I saw this trick that um, Julie Cutts used to do. So I know exactly where to put my canvas back so it's in camera angle. Now I should be able to put it back down. Underneath, I put this stuff. So then my... Um, when I was pouring the rabbits, it wasn't going to cave the canvas in a little bit because um, I didn't want to make any bad effects on the canvas. So that should be roughly where it was before. Crossing my fingers. Just move these things out of the way. And that, okay. Now, what I have here is I have Deco Art Extreme Sheen in Sterling Silver, which looks more like a pearl. Lavender Frost and Aquamarine. I made two cups of each. I made, so two, um, two Aquamarine, two Lavender, two um, Sterling Silver. Each cup had 10 grams paint, 10 grams Australian flow troll. Now, to that, um, I have poured these over the top of two little ceramic bunnies, which has kind of left this pattern on the bottom. There's a little bit left over, which I will scrape onto the canvas right now. Actually, I'll do the silver because that's, I didn't use all of that in the, on the bunnies. I may have more paint here than I, um, would normally use, but that's because I was pouring it on top of the bunny rabbits. I wanted there to be, like I knew some paint would stick to them. So then I didn't know whether how much extra I needed um, to actually still get the desired effect of my pearl pores that I do. So I'm not being fussy. By pouring them onto the bunny rabbits, I have, or the 3D objects, I have a mixed pattern on the canvas anyway. So, I'm just scraping the last bits out onto here. There we go. Now, I have also mixed up some black. Here is my black paint. So this is thinner than the metallic colors, than the extreme sheen. If it's not thinner, it won't work. So my measurements were 20, so 10, 10 in each cup of these. So even amount of Extreme Sheen to Flow Troll. Now, the black that I'm going to pour over the top. It is, oh, let me grab the bottle and show you. It is Montmartre Acrylic Color Signature Lamp Black. In this bottle, I poured out 85 grams of paint, then I used 170 grams of Australian flow troll, then I added 50 grams of water. So the water is what is needed to make it thin. If you want to get a pearl pour that actually works, stick to the measurements I just gave you. And this is for a 16 by 20 canvas. Um, you just have to adjust the measurements accordingly if you use a different size canvas. Um, but if I do this, if I do these exact measurements, every time I will get a pearl pour that works. So keep that in mind. I'm just going to bring this down into the middle a little bit better. When pouring over the bunnies, I think the paint was going that way. My table may actually be slightly uneven. Um, I will know when I pour this paint because this is a thinner pour. Um, 
a pearl pore is a thinner pore and I do know that's the easiest way for me to tell how even my canvas is um, or my table to say haven't done a lot of acrylic pouring on this table yet my art room has been changing so many times lately because I'm um, it's a small room and I'm trying to fit as much in it as I can and it's having to be reshuffled numerous times to make well when I say to make everything fit nothing it doesn't fit I only barely fit but um it's it's working so now we want to pour it through a strainer any type of strainer that's just going to get any clumps um, I have done this before without using a strainer and I tend to get a couple of clumps in there um, I don't know if it's the flow troll or whether my paints are getting a little bit older but I don't want a clump so I pour it through a strainer um, very easy to do so don't stress and think oh that sounds difficult it's not at all now I'm pinching my cup so I have a spout holding this over the center of the canvas and I am just pouring it straight through the strainer nice and simple and I should have put my gloves on before I did this I do not pour excessively fast, nor do I pour excessively slow. I also do not scrape my cup. I used to, I stopped doing that because I found that the flow troll can kind of give you weird marks, like an oily mark. So I've got no clumps in my strainer, but I'd rather say I've got no clumps in there than find out I have clumps in my artwork by not using the strainer. Sorry if I sound repetitive, but it's it's a really good thing to actually do, just for the simple fact that you don't want to waste all this paint and your artwork just because you didn't strain it. So um, that strainer will go get washed as soon as I finish doing this. So it comes out perfectly clean, no worries. It looks like my canvas might be slightly um, leaning that way. Now, we are going to pour this over the edges. See how the black is covering all the metallic color? Do not worry. It will shine through as long as your measurements are correct. So, I'm going to pour over this edge. Keep going close, and as soon as I get there, go over the edge and pour a little bit excess off. The first edge I always pour a bit of excess off, otherwise I don't get many pearls on that corner. Now, I didn't get the very, very corner, so I dab some paint onto it straight away. Now, let's go to this corner, all the way over, and then come back. Now, I'm pulling the canvas down to this opposite corner. Letting the paint come all the way. When it gets closer to the edge, I go a little bit quicker. All the way over. Yes. Come back to the middle. And I'm going to dab a little bit of paint that's on my finger on that corner. Bring it back to that middle. And now we've got the last corner to go. There is something in my canvas. I can see a ripple. Something's in there. I don't know what it is. So now I'm pouring it over this corner. You can't see. Sorry, guys. Just keep pouring it over that corner until it completely covers. I'm pouring off a little bit of excess. And then bring it back. Dab some paint on that corner. And then bring it back. Now, can you see some color starting to shine through? That is exactly what we want. So what happens is these paints have a slight reaction. That's about as much as I'm going to go. I don't want to tilt too much and start deforming those pearls that have already come up. So now I've got pearls come up. I'm going to stop tilting altogether. So there is a reaction with the paints, probably with the densities 
Um, so some paints are heavier, some paints are, are lighter, some paints are thicker. And because the black is thinner than the metallic colour, there is a reaction that happens with them, which means that they push their way through the black. Now, we are going to take my gloves off because I do not want any paints to drip onto my canvas. Oh, I made a mess. I don't know where that paint's coming from. I got paint on me and I don't know where it came from. Let's hope I didn't pour it off the table or get it on my shirt. Let me get this off the table while I'm at it. Okay, done. Now I'm trying to see, because I forgot to get one ingredient out before I started this, and that was my blowtorch. Where is he? Down here. Oh, goodness. I haven't used it in such... Oh, no, it's out of gas. Okay. Um, do I have another gas bottle somewhere? I do. Let's just watch this for a moment and you'll see more pearls come up. I'm going to quickly run and see if I've got an easy access gas bottle. If not, we won't be torching. <laughs> Okay, what a shame. I really needed to torch this. I can see a gas bottle, but I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to reach it. But can you see more pearls popping up, doing their thing? So that is exactly what we want. It's not going to be overly bold, this one. It's going to be teals, well, aquamarines, purples, with a little bit of silvery kind of pearly color coming through which kind of mixes with the purple and the blue. And some of them will be more dense, some of them will be more lighter. It kind of gives you that different effect. Hmm. Sorry, I'm still scanning with my eyes whether I moved any of the gas bottles into the art room, and it doesn't look like I did. <laughs> you got to laugh. No point crying. We'll all get there. My art room gets, well, everything in my house gets quite warm. So um, I have done my best to not um, fill it with every single thing. Uh, now I've got another blowtorch, but no gas bottle. I've got another, another one of the heads, but no gas in it, no gas bottle in there. So we won't stress about torching this. Torching it sometimes just pops a few bubbles. It can also bring up some more pearls that are already in there, but we will not worry. Um, it is not really going to affect anything. So you know, when I first walked out to get a gas bottle, you had a few up here and a few over here. Now look, see how they're, they're all pushing their way through, encroaching and, and telling the black, get out of my way. I want to show up. So that is exactly what a pearl pour is all about. Now this is the darker patch at the moment because that's where probably the most black paint is the thickest. By me tilting it back into the center, the black is kind of concentrated in this area. More pearls will come up in the next probably 20 to 30 minutes. The paint will push its way through. So we will be pausing this and I will come back soon and see what how many more have come through. I just have to climb onto my table to reach my camera because it's quite high. So we'll be back soon and actually see how many pearls we've actually got out of this, okay? Now, we are back. This has probably been 
oh, 15 minutes ago. As you can see, the whole canvas is nearly filled up completely with pearls. Those colours have just said, I want to be the, the star. And they pushed that thinner black paint out of the way. And depending on how thick or thin that your black actually is, see how these there's, there's quite a dense amount of pearls. And the way that they've come up, they pushed against each other and they're kind of making these like cell kind of patterns. So they're not um, a perfect circular shape. They pushed against each other and made kind of like pebbles or rocks. And um, that is the look I like. You can do it where you get complete circular ones, but you get a much bigger area in the middle, which is black. And they, so you get a very heavy black center and you get pearls around the outside. I found this way here is more visually um, appealing to me. So this is why I do it this way. But when I say a little bit thicker black, it is very small amounts. Don't overdo it. Um, also, I did not mention, which I will now, once I turn the camera off, I'm going to wash my strainer, um, cleaned out my cups and everything. You must scrape the bottom lip of your canvas with a pop stick. So, or anything, palette knife. You just go like that and get off the excess paint. The reason we do that is the paint will start to pull on your um, artwork. As it goes over the edge, it pulls and it stretches out the ones on the edge too much if you don't do that. It will also do this if you leave too much paint on your canvas and don't tip enough off. So if you do these pearl pores yourself and you're finding that you're getting things like that happen, like very elongated and stretched out, or even if your pearls are real big and and kind of um, really out of shape, it's too thin, um, or you had too much paint left on your canvas. It took me a little while to actually perfect um, this. So you just have to adjust your ratios a little bit by little bit and work it all out. Um, if you're using American Floetrol, it is thicker. You'll have to use less and, and use more water. Um, I have never used Old Troll before, um, but I believe that is thicker than um, Australian Floetrol, but thinner than American Floetrol. So, um, yeah, there's just little things you got to just keep in mind. Um, but with... If you're using Australian flow trial and you stick to my recipe, you will get these results every time. Um, as this continues to dry, more pearls may show up and this black may nearly disappear altogether. Um, you do find the edges, it thins out a little bit and the pearls come up, but they're not so dense and, and solid like they are here. Um, and I've also lifted the canvas up, moved it to a different spot and dipped um, stuff in the paint that has come off and little pearls have come up in that not as as good as as the canvas is But um, they still do do their thing Now, I don't know how good you can see the colors because I got I got three lights and I find they sometimes um uh, Bleach out the coloring because they're so white and they're making this look very pale So I will bring you down for a close-up, but um. Yeah, keep in mind that this will continue to probably grow. It doesn't always, um, but it may continue to grow for another 15 minutes. The temperature of the day also makes a difference. If it is a hot weather, you will probably get more bigger stretched out cells. If it is cold weather, you will get more smaller, um, densely tight um, cells. It's just the way that the, the heat kind of reacts with the paints and thins it out a little bit. But overall, this is today is um, autumn and it has been raining last night. So it's coolish, but it's actually still warm. It's probably like 24, 27 degrees um, inside the house. I'm not too sure. I don't have a thermometer. But yeah, I'll bring you down and show you a close up Ooh, right now. Okay, here we are. This is my angle. This is what I see standing in front of it. Um, as you can see, there is one light there, one light there, one light there. That one there is more subtle, but it still actually bleeds out and fades it a little bit. But these colours are really pretty intense and rich. 
Um, you can definitely see a pearl or sterling silver streak running through there. Then you've got the aquamarine and the lavender frost. So lavender frost is like a lighter purple. It's not a heavy, dense purple. So, but you can see the whole canvas is nearly covered completely in them. And these are really cool artworks. Um, a lot of people... When they see these, they, they don't realise that this is just something that you can do with acrylic pouring. Um, using the right paint and the right mixture, you can actually get awesome results every time. And um, I love them. So these are one of my favourite types of um, pourings. Um, and it was a good way of... I made these rabbits here. So it was a good way of using up the leftover paint. So I just put the rabbits on top of the canvas when I pour the rabbits. And then I use all the paint that's on the canvas to create this artwork. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, we will get some photos of it when it has dried. And you can see the end result properly then. But um, thanks everyone. So comment, like, share and subscribe. And we will see you soon for another video. Okay, catch you later. Bye. Okay, here we are, everyone. Oops, this is the finished artwork. So I've got a funny angle because I've got a cardboard box here that my cat's, cat had scratched up. So I was trying to keep that out of the angle. So let's go in for a close-up. So as you can see, these pearls have all condensed up. The colour really doesn't show up as good in the camera as it does in real life. Like this is more purple when in the camera it looks more pinky. Um, that's probably quite close. But overall, I'm really happy. So it's dried now. So, and I don't have a very big centre part, just this little area here. So they've all kind of closed up, and around the edges, you do get that. Um, softer look it depends how much extreme sheen you use but you could probably keep it really um like more dense but you'd have to use a lot more paint so um and i like this effect it kind of gives it a nebula style so this is it i don't know if i can get the colors to look different on different angles sorry it's hard to hold everything at the same time But this will shimmer. It will do so much better once I have given it a coat of varnish. Or um, I've been planning to put some resin on these, but I haven't done that yet. I'm a bit too scared to ruin my artwork. But you can see the black behind it kind of has that um, shiny look. And the pearls actually don't shine the same way yet. But they will. But um. I've got quite a few of these pearl pours in my house because they're one of my favourite um, styles of pouring. And um, I think they look awesome. But this is it. I'll go see if I can get a um, different type of angle inside under lights. Because outside here I've got limited area because I've got that many little spiders. Here's a daddy long legs coming to check out my painting. I live in Australia so... Spiders are just a natural part of being, well, inside and outside. All right, well, thanks, everyone. So leave a comment, um, like the video, share if you have, um, if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you have not already. And we will see you soon for another video. All right, thanks, everyone. Bye. And here's a quick look of it inside with um, just household lights. So you get shimmering, depending on which way it is, you get really different looks. But um, I have to put it down to let it focus again. But these pearls are really cool. I just wish the camera picked up the right colours properly. Alright, well, thanks everyone. Catch you later.